Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ, blessed. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. I'm Captain Zab. To my left, I have... Sojo Anais. Sojo Anais. Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, a portrait of a prophet, a portrait of what Israel should look like, really how we should carry ourselves and present ourselves as men of the Lord. We're going to focus in on the brothers today um, and really what they supposed to represent when they lead a house as ambassadors of Christ. Let's go to Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. The book of Hosea, chapter 3 and verse 4. Yep. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, mm -hmm. and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image. So, brothers are supposed to, uh, some, some of us grew up in households where the uh, standards of cleanliness, the standards of uh, upholding yourself were not stressed, they were not emphasized, they were not maintained throughout their childhood. So, they come into it with you know, uh, a lackadaisical approach of how they should really carry themselves. But no more can you do that now that you have repented. You got to make sure that your personal appearance is on point. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Let's look at that. Let's make sure we are representing Christ and the Most High the way they deem we do it. Come on. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Yeah. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. See that? We are the ambassadors for Christ. That's who we are. You men of the Lord, you are ambassadors of Christ. You got to make sure you carry yourself and you look a certain way. You smell a certain way. You present yourself in all the ways that the Bible says you should. This is your standard of how to do that. Come on, let's go to Sirach chapter 19 and verse 29. The book of Sirach chapter 19 verse 29. Yeah. A man may be known by his look. Mm hmm. And one that hath understanding by his countenance mm. when thou meetest him. So a man is known by his look. It's important how you look because people are going to look at you and they're going to develop an immediate idea of the person that you are. Right? What they say, uh, you know, you, you can only make one first uh, impression. Yeah, so once you, once you carry yourself that way, brothers is handing out flyers to people. They go into camp. That's your first impression that that brother or sister might ever see of a man of the Lord. So you got to make sure that you present yourself the right way. Come on, keep going. A man's attire and excessive laughter and gait show what he is. So a man's attire that show who you are. You got to make sure that your attire is, is presentable, right? Your, your, your clothes should be ironed, right? Your, you should have a haircut. You should smell good. Your breath shouldn't stink. These are things that you should be able to, to do because you are an ambassador of Christ. This is the first impression that people are going to have when they, they meet the prophets of the Lord. You got to make sure you present yourself well. Come on, let's go to Genesis chapter 27 and verse 27. Because we got to figure out where we got these, uh, these, these traits from for not really caring. Some brothers just don't care about how they look and how they present themselves. I can't, I can't understand it. Have some brothers in the body, right? You'd be like, bro, if you just like got a haircut, you'd be all right. You know what I'm saying? If you make sure your clothes was ironed, like, sometimes you don't have to put that shirt in the dryer because it make it look old, hang dry. These basic things we could learn, but some brothers, they just don't know. They didn't learn. They didn't learn how to wash their clothes properly. Come on, let's look at this. The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 27. Yeah. And he came near and kissed him. So this is uh, Jacob um, presenting himself before his father, uh, Isaac, and he's trying to uh, supplant uh, Esau. 
Now, Esau was known specifically by his father, you know, by s- certain qualities. Now, let's see what those qualities are. Come on. And he smelled the smell of his raiment. And he did what? And he smelled the smell of his raiment. Go ahead. And blessed him mm. and said, see, the smell of my son. The smell of his son, Esau. Is as a smell of a field. Is as a smell of a field. Go ahead. Which the Lord hath blessed. Where he was working all day. That's what he said that Esau smelled like. So where do you get these qualities from for not really caring about how you look, smell, and appear before the Lord? Where are you getting that quality from? You're getting it from your oppressor. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. That's where you're getting it from. Because that is not the standard of the Lord. When we, we read about David and other men going out to war, they still made sure that after they finished their battle or whatever it was, that they cleaned themselves, that they right. bathed. Come on, let's go. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Yeah. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, mm-hmm. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So when we was destroyed in slavery, these, these, these bad behaviors that we have picked up is because of slavery. And when we was destroyed, we continue to carry on these negative behaviors, this negative process of making sure uh, of not making sure that we maintain and 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 uphold a certain standard of of what we should represent of representing men of the Lord the sons of God that's who you are so people should see you see you that way let's go to Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 9 let's see what the Lord said about us the book of Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 9 yeah. then washed I thee with water mm-hmm. yea I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. So that's how the Lord did. He made sure that we washed us. That this is what He wants us to be like. He wants us to be washed. Come on. I clothed thee also with broidered work, mm-hmm. and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. Mm. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands. So we had jewels on and stuff like that. The Lord cared about what we look like. Come on. And a chain on thy neck, mm-hmm. and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thy ears, and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Mm-hmm. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, yep. and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk, and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Here come. And thy renown, and, I what? and thy renown, thy renown went forth among the heathen. So we always had a representation of looking good of smelling good, of presenting ourselves well. That was our reputation. That's what renown means, our reputation. We was known for making sure that we was always a specific and peculiar people that had high standards of, of representation and what we looked like at all times. Right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 23 and verse 25. I read now we had a reputation of looking good. That's what we're supposed to do. So you brothers out there, man, going out to camp, going, and, and even if you're not going to camp, going to work, moving from point A to point B, and you're looking bummy, you got to fix that because you are an ambassador to Christ all the time. Everywhere you go, when people see fringes, they're going to say, man, I wonder what them fringes represent. When you got them on a dusty shirt, you're looking all bummy. They go, I don't want no parts of that. All right, come on, let's look at it. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 25. Mm-hmm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of ex- extortion and excess. So now what happens is some people want to put all their focus on their personal appearance, right? And that's not what I'm telling you to do, Israel. Let's see what Christ said you're supposed to do. Come on. Verse 26. Yep. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is in within the cup. So you got to cleanse first the inner man. That's the order. This is the order of how you make sure that you cleanse yourself. You clean first the inner man. Come on. And platter that the outside them may be clean also. So after you make sure that you're clean internally, also externally, you are supposed to be a reflection of what you have internally. That's what you're supposed to be. Come on, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 5 and verse 1. Christ put the order in place. You clean first the inside, and but after that, you make sure that the outward appearance is on point as well. Come on. The book of Ezekiel chapter 5 and verse 1. Yeah. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, mm-hmm. take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thy head 
and upon thy beard. So another thing you can do is make sure your haircut is on point. Make sure you're not looking sloppy. Make sure you, 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 your grooming standards are maintained. Let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1 and 2. Grooming standards. Make sure you uphold grooming standards, even with your hair. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 52 and verse 1. Yeah. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Mm -hmm. Put on thy beautiful garments, so, O Jerusalem. So part of you awake and part of you repentant is, like, like we were saying before, you make sure that that outward appearance starts to come up as well. You start making sure that that outward appearance is, is different from what it was before. Come on. The holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee mm -hmm. the uncircumcised and the unclean. Let's go to Psalms chapter 45. Psalms 45, verse 7 and 8. So you want to make sure the order is you clean the inside man first, then you start working on the outside man. The outside man doing things like your grooming standards, maintaining your beard, your haircut, right, things like that. Also, uh, make sure you're maintaining uh, uh, your, your clothes to a certain standard. Psalms 45, verse 7. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 45, verse 7. Yeah. Thou lovest righteousness mm -hmm. and hatest wickedness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Mm -hmm. All thy garments smell of myrrh. So all your garments smell good. Go ahead. And aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces, whereby they have made thee glad. So we supposed to make sure that we smell good, right? You want to make sure that you're doing things to make sure that you smell well. Wash your clothes, right? Make sure you put your cologne and your fine oils on and things like that so you smell well. Last but not least, let's go to the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 3. So these are different attributes. These are different tools you can use to make sure that you are maintaining your grooming standards uh, we're going to go here. Wisdom Psalm 13, 3. Come on. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, and verse 3. Yeah. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods. Mm -hmm. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty hath created them. So the first author of beauty has created you, Israel. So you men of the Lord, make sure you're representing and you're carrying yourself as ambassadors of Christ. Make sure you are presenting yourself well. With that, we're going to say shalom. I'm sign Christ Brooks. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.